Okay, so in this presentation, we'll be reconsidering the, the position of Malayo Polynesian within the Austronesian family. Um, so there has been consensus in the literature that all Austronesian languages spoken outside Taiwan constitute a single primary branch of Austronesian um, known as Malayo Polynesian. So this is seen in both well accepted subgroupings in 1A and 1B. In both trees, Malayo Polynesian is placed as a higher order subgroup that doesn't bear any particular closer relationship with specific Formosan subgroups. So superficially, this is in line with the consensus in the archaeological literature that the out of Taiwan event was a single historical event that represents the migration of a single group of population called um, for Malayo Polynesian. But from a sociolinguistic perspective, um, Leo Polynesian would in principle belong to a certain subgroup located in the Austronesian homeland. And this would in principle point to a subgroup in scenario N2, whereby Malayo Polynesian is embedded under a specific Austronesian primary branch. Well, and this, there's two less likely scenarios. The first is that um, speakers of Pearl Malayo Polynesian move out Taiwan soon after reaching the island. So there hasn't been any sheer innovation developed. Um, or, or that um, Leo Polynesian originated as an independent group when reaching Taiwan. And this group then moved out without leaving any modern descendant in the homeland. Uh, but given the consensus in the archaeological literature that there has le at least 1,000 years pause before the settlement of the Luzon Island, both scenarios are less likely and this with positive evidence. So, um, in brief, there looks like to be, there seems to be a mismatch between the traditional segrouping and the kind of scenario expected from a socio-historical perspective. Um, but due to the lack of linguistic evidence, previous studies wasn't able to point out a possible origin of Malayo Polynesian, drawing on linguistic evidence. So in this presentation, we'll be presenting some new evidence that point to um, the revised proposal whereby Malayo Polynesian is not an Austronesian primary branch, but a sister of East Formosan. And together, the two branches comprise an, a primary branch that we call Coastal Formosan. Um, so evidence for this claim come from an understudied innovation um, that re reanalyzed the Proto-Austronesian actor voice state of intransitive affix ma into a patient voice like transitive affix. And we show that this change is exclusively shared between East Formosan and Malayo Polynesian. So this evidence leads us to propose this new proposal whereby these two originally considered uh, primary branches are actually sisters of the same branch. Um, and we'll talk about the specific linguistic evidence that lead to this new segregation. So in the following, we'll first give an overview of the linguistic evidence that define Malayo Polynesian, then talk about uh, the functional variation of the affix ma in Western Austronesian, then we'll talk about our new segregating proposal. So Malayo Polynesian as a single Austronesian higher order subgroup is defined by a series of innovations tested across extra Formosan languages. Um, but uh, while these innovations provide strong evidence that these extra Formosan languages all derive from a single origin, they didn't provide direct evidence for the external affiliation of Malayo Polynesian. And the question is whether this group bears a closer relationship with any, any particular Formosan subgroup. So from a phonological perspective, um, two Formosan subgroups are most likely to be the closest relative of Malayo Polynesian. The first is Bunun, um, which shares two mergers with Malayo Polynesian, uh, Bruno Austronesian capital C and T, and Bruno Austronesian capital N and N. Um, the other is East Formosan, um, which shares the merger of capital C and T with Malayo Polynesian. But since both mergers are pretty common in Austronesian and outside Austronesian, most previous researchers cons didn't consider these strong evidence for segregating. So speaking of geographical distribution, um, Bunun is um, a mountainous language spoken in central Taiwan. 
whereas easternmost and comprises four languages that distribute across the coastline of the island, uh, which is marked as the purple regions um, in the map. So now we're ready to move on to the functional variation of the specific morphing ma in Western Austronesian, um, which we argue shed new light on the subgrouping scenario. So um, ma is a a state of intransitive affix is widely attested in Western Austronesian, and um, it features an intransitive clause structure with actor voice case frame. So as seen in the Tagalog example 9a, with the st state of affix, the sole argument of the clause bear pivot marking. And this case frame is also seen in other canonical actor voice constructions as in 9b and c. And across Western Austronesian, we see the same function of ma that's widely distributed. So these are some um, data from Formosan languages that all bear this um, intransitive actor voice case frame. And outside Formosan, we see exactly the same function of ma and um, with the same case frame. So this function is non-controversially reconstructable to proto austronesian as it is attested in all Austronesian primary branches. Um, but the look into the literature revealed reveal the second function of this morphing that E serves as a transitive affix that marks a patient voice-like clause. So consider the examples here from Amin's and Tagalog. So with the same affix ma, a clause can either be intransitive with an undergore pivot, or it can be transitive with an undergore pivot and a genitive mark initiator. So, um, and here, importantly, this case frame is not widely attested in Formosan, um, and so in the majority of Formosan languages, a ma morphing cannot um, denote a transitive clause with a genitive initiator. Um, this is seen in the Puyuna example. Um, to, uh, 15. So, and according to our survey, there are only four languages that allow this transitive structure, which are beside Tropia 1, Kavalan, Amis, and Siraya. And here are the data uh, seen here in 16 and 19. So, in all four languages, it's possible to have a ma clause that uh, denote a transitive structure with a pivot marked an undergore and a genitive mark initiator. Um, and um, interestingly, all four languages are exactly the member of the East Formosan branch defined in BLAST 1999. Um, and members of this group are defined by a single but unique merger that's for Austronesian J and N, which is not attested elsewhere in within Austronesian. And outside Formosan, this function is also widely attested um, in at least four of the nine Malayo Polynesian primary branches. And here we follow Smith 2017 Sacrifice. So this function is found in the Philippine, Palawan, Chamorro, and Western Indonesian branches. Um, so as seen here, uh, this transitive function of Ma is widely attested in the Philippines. And it's also found in two other um, Malayo Polynesian primary branches, Chamorro and Palawan. Um, and here it shows that we also see the same function of Ma in various Borneo languages um, um, across different um, um, primary branches of Western Indonesian. And importantly, we see this innovative function across O4 botanic languages, um, Ibatan, Ibatan, Ibayatan, and Yami. So as see here, um, O4 languages allow a ma mark transitive clause with an undergore pivot and a genitive initiator. And here is the survey that summarizes our, our result. So a quick summary, uh, it's pretty clear that the intransitive stative use of ma is reconstructable to proto Austronesian. And but the transitive use of ma is attested only in a small number of um, um, Formosan languages and but multiple Malayo Polynesian primary branches. So this distribution leads to four possible explanations. Um, scenario one argues for a scenario of single innovation, whereby this transitive use is a single innovation shared between Malayo Polynesian and East Formosan. 
Scenario two argues for a retention analysis, whereby this transitive use of ma was also a retention from proto-Austronesian. Uh, scenario three argues that the, the use of this, this new function is a uh, two um, independent innovation that took place in proto Formosan and in proto malayo polynesian and a last scenario argues for multiple drifts that took place in various lower level set groups in East Formosan and Malayo Polynesian. So we will be arguing for scenario one. So scenario two, arguing for the transitive mod as a proto austronesian retention uh, is clearly undesirable as a force system um, interpretation that this transitive function is independently lost in eight of the nine, uh, eight, oh, eight of the ten Austronesian primary branches, but preserved in all is for most languages, and in the majority of Malayo Polynesian primary branches. But at the same time, the state of intransitive function is preserved across all um, Austronesian branches um, as higher order in higher order languages. So this scenario is. Um, apparently not very economical. So scenario three is not favored for a similar reason that it's not economical to assume um, two independent but identical innovation in these two branches. And that also leads to uh, a, a necessary assumption that the merger of Peru-Austronesian capital C and T is also an outcome of drift in these two branches. Scenario four is even more non-economical as we have to assume this identical change that took place independently in various lower level set groups. So we are arguing that scenario one would be the best approach to, to explain the distribution of seen earlier and would pro provide other pieces of linguistic evidence supporting for this view. So this proposal is especially convenient since this innovative use of mod is attested in all the platonic languages, which are likely to be the immediate descendant of pro malayo polynesian So, and importantly, this um, interpretation point to a plausible history for the origin of malayo polynesian and potentially give the, this, this branch a home in the Austronesian homeland. And finally, we'll, we'll talk about some other linguistic evidence and inferences from sister fields that um, point to a consistent um, conclusion. So according to our current analysis, we propose that there was an Austronesian primary branch that we call Costal Formosan. Um, and this branch is defined by two changes. First is the um, merger of pro austronesian capital C and T, and the second is the innovation of this transitive use of ma from an intransitive affix. And our, at lower level, East Formosan is still defined by the merger of Proto-Austronesian J and N, and Malayo Polynesian by the original, in the, um, the commonly agreed innovation that's shared across extra Formosan languages. So importantly, the fact that all for East Formosan languages are distributed around the coastline of Taiwan, um, indicate that probably the ancestor of this community was a seafaring um, group that e eventually expanded to the Botanic Islands and Luzon um, once the all rigor canoe is available. And this is in line with the out of Taiwan hypothesis that uh, it was at some point in a migration out of the island. So implications in conclusion. So not only does the current proposal provide a plausible story for the origin of the Polynesian, but also it was, it's more in line with a socio-historical perspective that MP was a population that moved out Taiwan after a thousand years long pause. Um, and there are also some other lexical evidence that would be easier to explain under the current hypothesis. So, for example, there was the proto austronesian existential negator Uga, which is widely spread across Formosan languages, as seen in 27. Um, but interestingly, this um, existential negator has a different form, form in the East Formosan language, Amis. And this innovative form is shared 
uh, tested across various Malayo Polynesian languages, um, including the Batonic languages and languages spoken in the Philippines. So if Amaze is not um, a member of a, a certain linguistic subgroup with these um, extra Formosan languages, the fact that they all reflect, reflect a replacement innovation is difficult to explain. And also, uh, we have identified a group, a list of, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> list of cognates that's exclusively shared between East Formosan languages and various Malayo Polynesian languages. So, for example, cognate of fugu as a canonical bamboo basket trap for fish is widely attested in Malayo Polynesian languages, but was only found in um, two East Formosan languages in Taiwan. And there are a number of um, vocabulary are similar that that's widely distributed in Malayo Polynesian, but uh, tested only in East Formosan languages. So altogether, this point to this possible connection between um, East Formosan and Malayo Polynesian. Um, and we also got positive genetic study result that indicate that members of East Formosan there is a particular closer relationship in terms of the genetic distance uh, with Filipino population. Um, and for example, this is um, some data from Chan et al. 2011 that shows that the Amis is, bears a significantly closer relationship with Filipino population than with other Formosan tribes. And then we see a similar um, um, conclusion from some other genetic studies. Um, for example, Chejit et al. 2005 shows certain Y chromosomes occurs frequently among the Amis and some other um, um, some Malayo Polynesian communities, but the same chromosome is not tested in any other Formosan communities. So implications. Um, if the current proposal is on the right track, then we can conclude that East Formosan is the closest relative of Malayo Polynesian and the Austronesian homeland. And ancestor of Malayo Polynesian derived from a linguistic community that also gave rise to modern um, East Formosan languages. And that the Out of Taiwan event probably took place in a seafaring community that's located um, in somewhere around the coastline of Taiwan. And um, important consequences of this proposal is that the Austronesian family tree might be better viewed as possessing only nine and not 10 primary branches. So for future directions, we're going to look into some other potential shared innovation that's exclusively attested between East Formosan and Malayo Polynesian. And we were also going to launch a comprehensive look into the lexical semantics of Ma and different Western Austronesian subgroups. And finally, we hope to build an online database for future morphosyntactic comparison um, within the Austronesian family. And here are the references of this presentation. And we wish to thank um, the following persons for helpful comment and feedback for this project. Um, Robert Bloss, Beth Evans, and Malcolm Ross. And we also thank Jason Mobile for generously providing us with some Borneo data. Um, this paper has been accepted at Diachronica with minor revisions. Um, welcome to email us for a copy of the manuscript and your comment or feedback would be appreciated. Thank you.